Today, America, Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about the United States economy. I want to talk about the number one thing that politicians talk about when they ask you to support them, when they're on the campaign trail, and that is we want to put America to work. I know what it's like to put America to work because I'm very proud to say that before I got elected to office, my full-time job was to put Americans to work. I owned a business, and there were dozens of families who depended on me as the leader of that business, as the owner of that business, to make sure that we were successful. So I had to do my job so that dozens of people can go to work and do their job. And millions of Americans, every two years, go to the polls and hope and pray and think and expect that they're electing people who are going to focus on putting America to work. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the leadership of this House under Speaker John Boehner has been delinquent in doing one simple thing, and that is to focus on bills that create jobs. In some cases, it's bills that moves government out of the way to make sure that people can put people to work in private industry. In some cases, it's about changing laws that are broken and old and just don't work for today's economy and changing those laws to make sure that Americans can go to work. Democrats have made jump-starting our economy a priority. And I believe in that priority. And since I've been elected to Congress, I've been fighting on that priority to try to get bills heard in our committees that will create jobs, that will move America forward, that will move Americans who are hard-pressed and want to get off of the unemployment lines back into work, to get, hear them through committee and then eventually on this floor of this House so we can have the debates and we can cast our vote for America. But unfortunately, those bills just languish, sitting somewhere in the corner and don't see the light of day. For example, the biggest bill to ever pass either of our houses of Congress or the United States Senate since this 113th Congress has come into session was a bill that was passed by the United States Senate and it had bipartisan support. There are 100 United States Senators, ladies and gentlemen, 168 Democrats and Republicans voted aye, voted yes, voted affirmatively for that bill. You see, because that bill, if this House would have taken up that bill, or if this House would have taken up H.R. 15, a bill that looks just like it, that would have boosted our economy. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear people all the time right now today on the campaign trail saying re-elect me or elect me, and they're talking about the economy, and they're talking about deficit reduction. And that one bill has an analysis, third-party analysis, not analyzed by the Democrats, not analyzed by the Republicans, not even analyzed by the independents, analyzed by a third party that that's their job just to call it like it is. That bill, if passed by Congress and put on the president's desk, would give us an opportunity to have a deficit reduction of at least $900 billion. But that bill doesn't see the light of day, not in this House. That bill has not been taken up in this House. And Speaker John Boehner has said over and over, I'm not going to take up that bill. I'm not going to take up that issue. I'm not going to support the American economy, not with that bill. I'm not going to do the right thing by America and give the economy of the United States of America the biggest boost 
we could ever see coming out of the actions of the United States Senate and this House of Congress. It's been sitting here in this house, in the corner, collecting dust. While too many Americans are having their unemployment run out, why too many Americans are losing their homes, why too many Americans are telling their children, I'm sorry, son. We can't afford to continue to send you to college. We don't have money, any money because we don't have a job. The United States economy can do better. But unfortunately, it's because this Congress chooses not to do the right thing, the United States economy moves along slowly, picking up just a little bit. That's not good enough. That's not right. What I'm doing here at this moment tonight, what, the reason why I came to this floor, the reason why I asked the speaker, can you give me some time to speak on an important issue, the economy of the United States of America, is because it tears me apart to know the, the lack of leadership in this House and the lack of leadership of Speaker Boehner is crippling our economy. $900 billion of deficit reduction wrapped up in one bill, and that bill has sat in this House and has not heard a debate in any committee. It has not heard a debate on the floor of this House. The people that you all elected have not had an opportunity. 435 members of the United States Congress have not had an opportunity to stake a claim on whether or not they believe that we ought to put Americans to work, that we ought to get out of the way and fix a law that is broken, a law that does not work, a law that should have been changed a long time ago, but we can change it at any moment on any given day in this House, and this Speaker refuses to allow that to happen. You see, what's going on right now in the United States Congress it's just like what happens in your home or sometimes in a workplace. Let's say you have a family and everybody in the family has been assigned their chores, their responsibilities. Say you have a workplace where everybody has their job duties and their titles. In the United States Congress, we have our chores. We have our responsibilities. Our job is to pass laws to help America move forward, to make sure that all the different dynamics of the number one economy in the world can flourish. That's our job. But the United States Congress, this House, has refused to do its job. What's going on is it's just like that, that example I just gave you. Say in your home, one member of your family chooses not to do their part. You know what happens? Something good eventually happens. Somebody in that house, somebody in that home, somebody in that workplace sees that that job is not getting done, even if it's not their primary responsibility. They think of the bigger picture. They think of the whole family, the whole house, the whole home. That person in the workplace thinks of the whole body of workers there and says, you know what, somebody ought to take that, take that job and get it done, even though so-and-so isn't doing their part, and that's their job. Congress is not doing its job. It's not passing this law. But you know what happens eventually? Somebody walks over there, they do it themselves, even though it's not their primary responsibility. But we ought to be grateful that there are people like that in every community, in every household, in every business, in every work environment. But not in this house. Not as long as John Boehner, our speaker, chooses not to allow us to have a debate, to do our job, to have a vote. 
Maybe it passes, maybe it fails. But our job as members of Congress is to legislate. Put ideas, good, bad, and otherwise, before the members of this House and vote up or down, yay or nay, yes or no, to move America forward. And let the votes fall where they may. There's a bill that's been languishing in this House for over a year and a half, or close to a year and a half, and the bottom line is we have not taken up our duties and our responsibilities. So as a result of that, as a result of that, there's another branch of government. And that person, one person, not 435, not 100, one person says, you know what? I want to move the economy of the United States of America forward. I want to fix a broken system. I want to see it fixed. I want Congress to put this on my desk so that I can do my job and sign it and watch people go, Americans, go back to work. And all of a sudden, the one person who says, since you won't do jo your job, I'll go over there. And to the best of my ability, to the extent that I legally can, well, I'm just going to have to do as much as I can, lift as much as I can, do the heavy lifting, because Congress won't. And he gets criticized. That's a, that's a shame, ladies and gentlemen. That's a shame. When in the workplace or somebody's household, somebody decides to step over and say, you know what, since you won't do it and it's the right thing to do, I'm going to do it. And then they criticize that person. He's the bad guy. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. The bad guy, the bad person, is the one that says, I know I have duties. I know I have responsibilities. I just don't want to do it. Because I can say I don't want to. And if I don't want to, it doesn't get done. At least not in this house. That's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. United States Congress is sitting on a bill that will supercharge the economy of the United States of America to the tune of deficit reduction of as much as $900 billion with one bill, one vote of this House. And our current speaker, a Republican leader, does not want to let that happen. The President of the United States is another branch of government. The President of the United States is part of that balance of power. But when one, br one branch of government is delinquent, is derelict in their duties, there comes a time where that person has to say, hey, what can I legally do? I want to step up. I want to put America to work. And as a result of that, has to take action. Now, to me, that is a duty bestowed upon every single one of us elected officials. And I'm so disappointed that I got elected to a Congress that has been labeled as a do-nothing Congress. I got elected to a Congress that the statistics, not just opinions, but the facts show that this Congress has passed so few laws that people can actually legitimately say that we are a do-nothing Congress. That is a shame. We have responsibilities to this country. When we act responsibly, we make our country what it is, the best country on the planet. And when that happens, the whole world is a better place. But that's not been this 113th Congress, not under this speaker, not now. But the most important thing that I want to get across today, that could change. That could change tomorrow morning. 
We could have that bill on the floor of this Congress tomorrow. We can have it on this floor next week. And we can unleash what Americans go to vote for, and that is action. Let the votes fall where they may, ladies and gentlemen. Our duty as Congress is to hear bills on this floor, have the debate from the left and from the right, from the center, and all, come one, come all, members of Congress, and then the speaker says, open the roll. And there go the votes. Green ones, red ones, yay, nay. But just on that one bill, ladies and gentlemen, more Americans will go to work as a result of one piece of legislation than any other thing that this Congress has been poised to do in this 113th Congress. So right now, as the clock ticks, as Congress might adjourn in just a couple of weeks or so, it's going to be left for another branch of government to decide to move this economy forward, to put Americans to work. That's a shame. That's not, that's not the way it should be. That's not the way it was designed to be. But the Constitution of the United States, you've all heard it. Everybody who's taken government class is called the balance of powers. Executive branch, judicial branch, the legislative branch. But when one of those branches is derelict in their duties, as this House has been derelict in their duty to put Americans to work, it takes a committed American. It takes a brave American to step up and say, I'll do it to be careful about how it's done, to be doing it in a way that's legal and does follow the Constitution of the United States of America. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, to get the job done. To put America to work. To break a broken system to break a set of laws and renew that into a law, into action that will actually put America to work and allow us to continue to be the great nation that we've become. But unfortunately, there's a piece of our government, this House, that is not living up to that greatness. It's not living up to its responsibilities. It's not living up to its duties. This House, this do-nothing Congress. When I say do-nothing Congress, that is so painful to me. I'm the son of parents who used to wake me up sometimes before the sun came up to go to work in my father's business. And what my father used to tell me, I was five, six years old when he had me working with him. He used to say, son, the work's not done. We got to keep working. Sometimes so much that my hands would bleed. And I'd put on my best crying game and I'd say, dad, look, my hands are bleeding. Can I sit in the truck? My father was a handyman. We used to clean fields and clear out houses or whatever odd job that people had for us to so take me to work with them. And I remember the first time I thought I was going to be able to sit it out and not do my part because my hands were bleeding. I had blisters. They turned into, they busted, and then they turned into blood. And I showed them to my dad and tried to give my best sob story. And he told me, son, the work's not done. We got to get back to work. Now get back to work. Oh, I hated him for it. That's a leader. Someone who can look 
someone in the eye and say, you need to be what you need to be right now. And that's someone who gets the job done. Not someone who looks for excuses. Not someone who tells stories. Not someone who tries to get off the hook. You need to be the person that gets the job done. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, this house is not the house that gets the job done. It hurts for me to say that. I hate saying it. But sometimes the truth hurts. That's not my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just restating the facts. I hated my father when he taught me that lesson. But it wasn't until I grew up and it wasn't until I had to put food on the table for my family. It wasn't until I grew up and ran my own business that I realized that it's not about the easy way out. It's not about quitting. It's not about being derelict in your duties. It's about accepting your responsibilities, acting out on those responsibilities, working through your responsibilities, not making up stories, not holding press conferences, and hoodwinking the American public into thinking that it can't be done. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. We can take care of business on this floor from today to tomorrow and get a bill to the other house or take a bill from the Senate, take it through this house and get it to the president overnight. So anytime some congressman or U.S. senator tells you, no, 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 there's not enough time. As long as there's at least one day, one day of legislation left. Oh, as a matter of fact, both houses have the, re the authority to call back their entire house and say, our business is not done. We can get it done tomorrow. Call every member of Congress, call every member of the United States Senate to that, their chambers and say, we've got work to do. There's no time off for us. There's no time away from these chambers. We're going to get the work done. But this House chooses not to do its job. Some people might think, well, this congressman, this congressman Cardenas, he's kind of talking a little, little strong about this House. You better believe it. We're the Congress of the United States of America. There have been moments on this house where we've been applauded by America for the kind of bravery and the kind of work that gets done in this house. That hasn't happened much lately, not in the 113th Congress. One bill, ladies and gentlemen, one bill has been sitting in this house languishing, collecting dust, while millions of Americans are out of work. That's a shame. That's a shame. I wish there were more members of this Congress, like my father, who knew how to get the job done, who knew how to focus on the people that depended on him, who had a don't quit attitude. My father was a man of few words, few words. But when he spoke, he was serious, he was forthright, and he got the job done. And he had the guts, he had the fortitude, he had the character to know that sometime, sometimes, 
when it meant him getting the job done, it meant that maybe he wasn't going to be too popular, even with his own son. I'm so glad, so proud to be the son of a man and a woman, Maria and Andres Cardenas, who taught me how to go to work every single day. And whatever my duties were, whatever my responsibilities were, it wasn't about me. It was about the work that I committed to do and to get it done. Every week I leave my family in my district in California, in the San Fernando Valley, and I kiss them goodbye, and I hope and pray that they put me to work, that I get to do the work that I was elected to do. But that hasn't been happening in this house. And I'm not alone, ladies and gentlemen. I talk to a lot of members of this house, and they feel the same. They want to move America forward. They want to get this economy up and running the way it should be, the way America deserves to be. But this house refuses to help make that happen. Mr. Speaker, I really do hope and pray that we can put America to work, that we can pass a bill that will create $900 billion of deficit reduction opportunity. I hope and pray that we can do that. Unfortunately, it's not up to me. I'm not making excuses, ladies and gentlemen. It's not up to me. I do not have the authority or the ability to put a bill on the House of Congress. I have introduced bills. That's my right. I can introduce bills, and I do do that. But the only person who has the authority to decide if a bill will be heard by this House is the Speaker of this House. And that's elected Republican John Boehner. That's the man. That's the person who refuses to put a bill on the floor of this House so that every member of Congress can have the opportunity to do their job and help put America to work. I'm a proud American. And I'm so honored and privileged to be a member of the United States Congress, to represent the 29th District in California, the place that I was born and raised in, the community that I love, that is just a, just a, a microcosm of what this great nation's about and what it is. And my hands are tied. I'm not making excuses, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just telling you the truth. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Boehner, please, please put that bill on this floor. Put in motion. Do your job so that we can do our job, so that Americans can have a job, so that we, as members of this Congress, can put America to work. We have a broken immigration system, and one bill can fix that. We have a broken system in this country, and that one bill will put $900 billion toward deficit reduction for America. That one bill will unleash our economy and create hundreds of thousands of opportunities for Americans to go back to work. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the time allotted me. I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired.